Oh, thank you so much, Graham. It's that time of the morning for another edition of our Wednesday feature, where we focus on the unconventional, uh, unconventional rather, side of law. I absolutely love it. So it's like a, a mini consultation with a lawyer. It's called So Now What? And we're joined once again by our expert lawyer and director at LegalEase.co.za, Aitan Stern. Good exactly. morning. Exactly. Now, morning. last week, we chatted about the laws of the road mm. with regards to motorbikes and cyclists yeah. and what happens when someone pushes in front of you yeah. in the traffic. And there was so much in interest in the topic that we've decided to continue the discussion but this week we're focusing on public transport Ooh. Aitan in the house Aitan. how are you doing? <laughs> nice to see you bro <laughs> um, Aitan you. just be prepared that you might actually after this interview find that there's a mob of taxi drivers <laughs> and owners waiting outside this park here you don't want that because <laughs> depending on what you say here yeah, they might be waiting for you outside sure. okay are you ready I'm ready first question sure what are the laws around how many people are allowed in a taxi. <laughs> Please tell us. Okay, so, so just to put some context, so the taxi industry is a massive industry in South Africa. There's probably around 130,000 registered taxis, mm. probably about 70,000 unregistered taxis, although that's an estimate. It employs 600,000 people, and it's a 90 billion rand a year industry. Yeah. Wow. 15 million people travel in taxis to work every day in South wow. Africa. So wow. it is a massive, massive industry. It's mm. crucial to our country. The country could not, the economy could not survive without public transport. Yeah. So it is crucial that it's kept safe. Um, so to answer that question, mm. and just after the context, to answer that question, you know, the rules for taxis, how many people are allowed in, are the mm. same as any other cars. So, yes. okay. you know, if you've got a sedan, it's five people. If it's a minibus, it's 16 people. And depending on what the restriction is on that car, uh, that's how many people you're allowed into the taxi. So basically, 4-4 Mastalisane isn't necessarily the thing that should be happening. <laughs> basically. <laughs> what, what legal responsibility does a taxi driver have when I am in the taxi? Okay, so you know, so the driver has a, has a responsibility to keep everyone safe in the taxi. They, like any driver does, they have to keep to the, the the road laws. They're not allowed to speed. They have to pay the the traffic fines. But as a, as we were saying, the the problem is a lot more complex than what than what it seems, mm. because drivers are often paid. Um, you know, for a certain amount, they have to pay a certain amount of trips and then mm. they only make profit on the ones after mm. that. Mm. So, or they're paid a set fee. So, so getting there as quickly as possible is the name of the, the game. The only way that they can make yeah. a profit and make money is by getting there as quickly as possible. Yeah. So, you know, the problem is just a bit more complex than it seems. And mm. just like it's the driver's job to keep us safe, it should be the law's job to keep the drivers safe. Mm. And that's really, you know, that's what it starts to show how really deep and complex this mm. problem is. You mentioned a very interesting point here. here about getting there as quickly as possible sure. and I think many of us have been in a taxi <coughs> certainly I have been many times sitting in a taxi and I've seen it uh, go you know uh, the, the, the more illegal way of going over the yellow lane sure. you know, to try and get there as quickly as possible yeah. yeah what is it that I can do as a passenger sitting in the taxi if the driver is driving recklessly okay so arrive alive estimates about 70,000 taxi crashes a year which is way way too much mm. but again the whole industry is one and we can talk a bit more about why it's uh, it's kind of problematic um, but what can you as a as a passenger do hmm. well you can ask the driver to, to slow down <laughs> <laughs> You can, you've, you've, always got the, you've always got the right to, to ask to get out the taxi, you know, that's definitely within your right, you can't be held captive in there, so it's your right to get out as it is with any car that you're in. You can call the police if, if someone's <laughs> driven recklessly, or all taxis are part of taxi associations. So, you know, if someone really is doing something dangerous and it's affecting the, the passengers, which essentially affects the industry, you could try to report it to a taxi association. Yeah. But it's difficult because mm. taxis mm. are largely unregulated. Yeah, mm. yeah. And if, you, if you're sitting at the back and you're like, I don't like this. <laughs> oh, you have to ask everybody else to get out before you For can sure, get it's, out. Yeah. It's, dif it's a difficult thing. And it's a, essentially, I mean, there's an interesting history to the taxi yeah. associations in South Africa, but the, the industry is largely unregulated. Yeah. Yeah. And it's you know it's a it's a big and brilliant industry with lots of entrepreneurs mm. and business owners, but it's been one that um, that is so powerful and so big that governments found it hard to regulate. Yeah. Mm. Well, we are talking about the rules of the road specifically this morning about public transport. And when we come back with Aiton, I want to find out for him: is there law regulating how much taxis can charge? We might even talk about counting the change when you are sitting <laughs> in the front by the That's taxi the driver. There. Oh, do that. It's happening after the break. <laughs> 
Welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso right here on SABC3. So last week we started a really hot topic. We were talking about the laws of the road mm. uh, pertaining to motorcyclists and to cyclists as well. And uh, it was a really hot topic this week. We're moving on to public transport mm. and how that affects us all. Aiden Stern is here with us. And I wanted to find out from you, are there mm. any laws regulating how much you can be charged to use the taxi service? Okay, mm. so taxi is largely unregulated uh, by government in general. Um, and the way the taxi industry has been regulated is by these internal associations. So okay. Santa Co is like a, a big association which regulates taxis. Mm. The problem with them is that they don't they don't have lawmaking ability. Mm. Mm. So there aren't any set fees for taxis. But mm. what it has created is quite an interesting way that fees work. In that fees are sort of regulated in a couple of ways. Generally, they're regulated by the people in the taxis yeah. who just know what the routes are supposed to cost. Yeah. Um, they're regulated or they're monitored by by Santa Co and then they're also regulated by competition so okay. you know if there's if people are charging different fees it's going to be competition and yeah. that can yeah. lead to uh, kind of uh, serious issues so fees are not regulated but they're sort of the whole industry is sort of monitored by the people within the industry yeah. and then the real problem is that the prices will fluctuate of depending course. on the petrol mm. price, yeah. price the problem with things that aren't regulated is that there's not a lot of predictability in yeah. it um, so you know if it was regulated and there were regulated prices maybe that maybe it would make it better but mm. it's a very hard thing to do it's not mm. been easy for government to regulate taxi and so the taxi industry uses their own discretion on pricing and how they charge for fares basically. yeah for sure um, I mean we could spend a fortnight just chatting about taxis but sure. we know that the public transport <laughs> conversation is so much broader than that sure. let's talk about buses now okay. do the same laws that you've just mentioned now apply to buses Okay, so definitely the same road laws apply to buses. So bus drivers are supposed to, you know, keep to the rules of the road, mm. drive safely, not overpack their buses, etc. Mm. The difference in the industries is that buses have largely been better regulated by mm. government. So there's a couple of different bus companies from, you know, the city-owned ones like My City to mm. the long-distance ones like Greyhound, mm. and they're generally better regulated, yeah. um, but they carry only a fraction of the amount of people that taxis do. Mm. But it's also been quite contentious over the last few months trains yes w what are the laws that govern my safety when it comes to trains mm. okay so trains in South Africa most commuter trains are, are run by Metro Rail which yeah. is a part of Transnet so it's a state-owned enterprise mm. and there's a regulator called Pra Prasa, and Prasa's job is to make all the rules around trains so they're mm. supposed to make rules around train fares and keeping you safe on yeah. trains so you know there are laws around these things and if something goes wrong on a train it's your duty to kind of report that to Prasa yeah. and uh, and hope something happens from there sure. yeah every single morning I report on um, the traffic and sure. I speak every single morning without fail about train delays or yeah. even mm. sometimes up to two hours and it can be quite sure. hectic what happens when a train is delayed is it just oh, sorry catch the next <laughs> one or do I have any sort of recourse or any mm. re legal rights in this situation yeah I mean unfortunately it is kind of sorry catch the next one you know because it's such a big problem that you know really no one really knows how to fix it mm. um, what is your recourse theoretically you would have recourse if, if you were delayed and you say lost your job because of that or you or you were suffered damage yes you could claim against transnet for that and I hope someone does claim against mm. them for that but it is a difficult thing to do largely what us as South Africans kind of need to understand is that you know there are no ideal transport mechanisms mm. at the moment and uh, and a lot of people have to travel long distances on public transport to mm. get into work so I think us as South Africans uh, all just need to be understanding of this and understanding that the that public transport does cause delays for for, for, for people and we, yeah. you know, until there are ideal mm. solutions, everyone's yeah. just going to have to bear with it. Exactly. Just Ooh. be patient. Huh? Yeah. Just and be patient. Yeah. Patient and compassionate. Yes, and have your especially. phone on hand because if you need to call the cops, if you're in the taxi and they're driving <laughs> badly, you might want to just call and say, Hi, I'm here on Yip de inside this car and they'll come you know? uh -oh. <laughs> it's, it's really yeah. simple as that uh, well this is always been a hot topic who knows maybe we cover another variation of this next week but i mm. uh, want to thank the director of legalese.co.za eight Stern, yeah. for being in the house and this was pleasure. another rendition of so now what